Oops, let me apologize. There's a leaf blower outside of my window. Hopefully you can't hear it, but I can. But I will try to focus. So what do I have going on here? I have two secants that intersect at a point outside of the circle. And what I want to do in this video is come up with a relationship between the angle measure where those two secants intersect outside of the circle. Maybe we call that measure x right over here. A relationship between that and the measure of the arcs that it intersects. So this arc right over here, maybe it has a measure of theta. And then this arc over here, maybe it has a measure of phi. And what we're going to prove is that x is going to be equal to 1 half the difference of those arc measures. So 1 half the difference, the way I've drawn it here, phi is larger. So I'll put phi minus theta, minus theta. So let's get about proving that. And so one thing that we've seen multiple times is we know the relationship between an inscribed angle and the arc, the measure of the arc that it actually intersects. And we might be able to use that. So for example, if I were to draw a line here, if I were to draw a line here, we have this angle BED. It intersects, it's an inscribed angle, and it intersects this arc of measure theta. We know an inscribed angle has half the measure of the arc that it intersects. So this is going to be, let me write it over here, this is going to have a measure of theta over two. I know that's a little bit hard to see. So that's interesting. It still doesn't quite get us to x yet. But we have another inscribed angle that intersects an arc whose measure we know. We have this angle right over here, angle CBE. That angle, it as we just said, it intersects phi. So this is going to be phi over 2. Now why is this useful? Well, this angle, angle CBE, it's collinear with angle EBA. And so they are supplementary. So this angle, let me do this in a new color, this angle right over here, this whole thing, I'll do it with two arcs so you don't get confused with that. Although it looks really messy. Let me see, this whole angle right over here is going to be 180 minus phi over two. Let me be careful, minus, do it in that same color, phi over two. Well, now we know two angles in the triangle, we can figure out the third. We can write that x is going to be equal to 180 minus these two. I could have just said that x plus this plus that. Actually, let me just do it that way. So x plus, plus theta over 2, plus theta over 2, plus 180, plus 180, minus phi over 2, minus phi over 2 is going to be equal to is going to be equal to 180. Well, the first thing that I could do is subtract 180 from both sides. So let's do that. And then I could add or I could subtract each of these from both sides. So let me subtract theta over 2, subtract theta over 2. Let me do it this way. You'll see why I'm doing it in a second. Subtract theta, subtract theta over 2. And then over here, well, I'm not going to subtract each. I'm going to add the opposite, I should say. And let's add phi over 2. I'll do it here. So I have a little bit of more space. So plus phi over 2 to both sides. And then I'm going to put a phi over 2 on that side. And then what I'm going to be left with is that x. All I have left on the left-hand side is an x. So I get x is equal to phi over 2 minus theta over 2, which is the result that we wanted. Phi over 2 minus theta over 2, which is exactly this over here if you distribute the 1 half. I could factor out a 1 half, and I would get exactly that. And we are done. 